Okay, this is lecture two for waves. We will talk about Doppler's effect. Uh, but before we talk about Doppler's effect, the primary observation of Doppler's effect is in sound wave. So I kind of like want to like recap what sound wave is first with you. And here there is a speaker that is already in slow motion. And you can see the membrane of the speaker kind of like vibrating, vibrating. Okay, so this vibration is the is the reason why you have sound wave in the first place. It creates a variation in pressure. So all this GIF, I will include in the links in the description. So here you can see the speaker cone moving like this. And as it moves, right, it disturbs the uh, part air particles. And the air particles kind of like move and transfer energy to their neighbors. So if you look at it, right, wow, it looks like the wave is moving with regions of compression and rare fraction as mentioned in the previous lecture. So these GIFs are all from Flipping Physics. Pretty good channel, all right? So links are down below. So if you look at one single part, la layer or particle, right, that blue layer, it is actually not moving, you know, it's just oscillating left, oscillating right, oscillating left, oscillating right. Okay, this is an important concept, huh? And uh, again, longitudinal wave, okay? So parallel. So because, so because of this, we have places where the pressure is high and places where the pressure is low. So we're going to represent this by drawing a red line at the crest of your sinusoidal wavefront. Okay, the sinusoidal wavefront is just to show the changes in pressure. So you can see if, let's say, we know sound travels in all directions, 3D, yeah? okay? So let's say now you look at the particular tuning fork, the sound is traveling outwards. And if we draw a red line at the crest, you'll be able to see that, wow, it's like the red line traveling outwards. No? And these are all concentric circles. Okay. And here is where I purposely leave a few minutes so that you can stare at the GIF. Isn't it very soothing? You can meditate now. Okay. So if you look at it, again, uh, the red line is where all the particles are together. This is where the high pressure is. Okay. So this is your sound wave. So we are going to draw these concentric circles. Concentric means they have the same center, okay, uh, to represent sound wave in different, different situations. So we're going to start off with a car, but we're going to make it a bit uh, not so straightforward. The car will have a horn that he, will, that he or she will be pressed as the car travels from left to right. Okay, so the car is going to travel, sorry, from here to here. Yeah, flip camera problem. So there's the horn or the so-called sound wave. Okay, there's the center of where the wave will originate from. Let's look. One circle, two circle, three circle. So at first glance, it seems like there are some ellipses here, but actually they are not. They are all circles. But now they are not concentric. They don't have the same center because... The center keeps moving, the car keeps moving, but they are all circles, okay? So if you check out the blue one as reference, you will notice that as the car travels in this direction, right, it kind of like squishes or compresses the wave together, okay? Or the variation of high pressure together, okay? And at the other end, it drags out that pressure, the wave front. So you can see here, uh, as it travels on one side, the wave is squished together. So if let's say I'm standing and the car is driving towards me, okay, the sound source is moving towards the observer. I am the observer. The car horn is the sound source. So I will be able to observe that the crests right now drawing to represent, crests are closer to each other here. If the crest is closer, this means that the wavelength is less. Okay, if the wavelength is less because the speed of sound is constant, then the frequency you hear is higher. You will hear a higher pitch. Okay, and okay, once again, uh, I'm replaying the video a bit. So you can see where the car is approaching the observer, the wave fronts are closer, and because the wave front is closer, we can consider that the frequency will decrease okay v constant if f if lambda decrease f must increase okay so that observed frequency is the one that increases because the wave coming towards him is being squished so he observes and hears 
a increase in frequency. Or he just gets more sound wave per second. Uh. You just look at it. If he stands at the back of the car, he gets less sound wave per second. Less sound wave per second. The crests are further apart. Frequency will drop. Less sound wave reaches him per second. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Miss Lee, for showing us all these wonderful gifts you have compiled. Now, um, I know you'll be wondering, like, how does this sound like? I would do the demo, but it's kind of dangerous to do. So, we're going to look at flipping physics to do the demo for us. How does the Doppler effect sound like? On the left, you see me in the car, and on the right, you see the event from the perspective of the stationary observer. Before we heard what was happening from the perspective of the stationary observer, now let's listen to what we hear from inside the car. The frequency and therefore the pitch you hear is constant. Okay, that was pretty cool, huh? So you can hear the difference. If you're in the car, it sounds different. If you're the observer watching the car, go by, then it's different. Now, there is a definition for it. I've started writing a bit first. But when people ask you, what is a Doppler effect? You don't say, nah, it's a thing that go pew. No, 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 no. You need to say it's a change in apparent observed frequency. Of what? Well, why is there a change in frequency? Due to the relative motion or relative speed, relative velocity, relative motion between two things, between the source, okay, what is creating the wave? Is it a car? Is it a radio loudspeaker? Okay, relative motion between the source and the observer that's listening. So between the source and observer. So there are a few main ideas here. First thing is, a change in apparent observed frequency. So that means like, it sounds like a different frequency. That's what we call a change. And you want to make sure you say observed frequency. Yeah. It's not the actual frequency of change. It just sounds different. Uh, a change in observed frequency due to two things, relative motion between source and observer. Yes. So we're going to visualize this thing. Okay, last bit. We're going to come to an equation that will help us calculate these frequency shifts between you know, the source and the observer, whatever it is. So in the first case on the left, if you have a stationary, and this is what, ambulance truck sitting there, okay? So there's no speed, lab, V0, and it's stationary. Okay, so what's happening is, we can say there is no relative motion between who? Between the source, or I should say between, source and observer. By source, I mean the ambulance or, or the car honking, or whatever you want to call it. The source. No relative motion. Okay, Everybody is just stationary and chilling. So how would the, the, the waves look like? So if, if I want to see this fella on the left is observer 1. Observer 1. Then this fella on the right, I call maybe observer 2. La. Observer 2. Okay. So, the waves that are going to observer 1 are the same as the waves going to observer 2. Wow, my waves not... My waves very rough, not very smooth. Okay, so how do you know? Okay, this is the wavelength. Is it the same distance as this one? Yes, it is. So, well, we can call this wavelength 1, wavelength 2. And accordingly, based on the wavelength and things like that, this observer will hear some frequency. Okay, F of observer 1. This fellow will hear a frequency, F of observer 2. And the frequency of observer 1 is the same that the frequency of the source. Like, what, what is the actual frequency of the ambulance? And then F, which is the same as frequency of observer 2. Same. Okay, you P, I P, everybody P, everybody, okay. okay. Oh, I should say this is the frequency of the source. Yep. Okay, so all is well when we're not moving. But in the right side picture, you see, okay, this fella, the ambulance start moving already. So you're going at some velocity now. Velocity of the source, Vs. Now, oh, I forgot to draw an observer one here. 
So observer one, observer two. Okay, I put one and two lah, you know what I mean? Okay, let's draw the waves. So the what's the waves going to observer one? You see, it's like very spread out, right? Like we talked about. Oh man. So this wavelength here we call wave one. Accordingly, on this side, you have pretty squashed up waves. Hmm. And I follow the same circle, it would be this one right here. Wave length two. Yo, you see, so much smaller than the other one. Hmm. So, accordingly, you have the same frequency that the ambulance is emitting, but, but, the frequency that the observer one here is actually, what, higher or lower pitch? Lower pitch. Then, the frequency of the ambulance, the actual frequency lah. Then, same thing, the frequency of this observer two, what the fella here, is actually higher. It's like, so it's like getting higher lor. So, FO2 is bigger than F. So you can summarize it up here. La. FO1 is smaller than frequency of source. Oh, I should say source. And the frequency of source is smaller than the frequency of observer 2. Ooh, look at that. Uh, can, we also, can we also write something about lambda? Okay, here lambda 1 equals lambda equals to lambda 2. Then here, lambda 1 is much bigger. You see the wavelength very big. Bigger than the actual wavelength of the source, which is bigger than all this squashed up wavelength on the right side. So we can we're wavelength two. So that is how you can summarize this all this picture in your notes. Oh, I guess if you're taking notes for here, you can write this down. So how do we calculate or how do we find an equation that relates the frequency, the speed of the car, and all this thing? Because you will need to use this to solve problems in past years. Okay, so there is a, a long derivation for it. I'm not going to include it here, but ask me about it. Ask a teacher, a lecturer about it. But straight to the point, I'll give you hints. It's related to these equations. Okay, the wavelength equals to V times T. Okay, uh, this is the speed of sound. Do you know what the speed of sound is? Well, it depends. Roughly about 3, 4, 3 meters per second. Roughly there lah. Uh, what's T? T is the period of the source. Okay. I won't go through the whole derivation. I'll just show you what equations are involved. And there's also one more that you already know. V equals F lambda, the wave speed. Okay. Mm. So yeah, these two are involved in trying to determine a formula for Doppler's equation. So, I'll cut straight to the point. The Doppler equation can be calculated or related. All the frequency and wavelength can be related by this. F0, the observer, either observer 1 or observer 2, okay, can be V, speed of sound. I should write here sound. Speed of sound plus minus the source velocity so how fast is your ambulance traveling and this one multiply by the frequency of the source the original okay so let me draw a box around this this is how what we call the doppler equation it relates all the the the, the little variables that we have looked at just now okay this observer sound well i should say speed of sound and this is your source speed if it's, all, if it's ambulance, ambulance. If it's something else, whatever it is. Source. And this is also the source. What is the real frequency that is emitting? Okay? And you might be wondering, so means how do we know if observer 1 or observer 2? Q say FO or NEO. You see this plus minus here? Here's one thing you can remember. Okay? Uh, how do you know when to use plus or minus? Plus, you can use if your source is going further away. So if you are trying to find the frequency that observer 1 hears and well, the object is going away from you, then you use a plus. So plus away, minus, you can guess, is towards. So if the source is approaching you, the observer. So approaching, uh, yeah, observer. Okay. 
so it'll be important to know how to apply this. Okay, again, I repeat, if you are curious to know where this one comes from, there's a pretty long derivation. Yeah, just ask me about it, check in the notes, we'll let you know. But yes, remember this equation. Is it in the past year? I forgot already. Go and check now. Take any past year paper, go to page 1, see if this is there. I think it is. So, not only can you apply this Doppler effect to sound waves, you can also apply it to light waves. Ooh, this is very mystical stuff. Anyway, so here maybe I say, instead of an ambulance, I put a sun. Ah, yes, I put a sun here. I need a bigger pen. Okay, so if you are here, let's call this observer 1. I call this observer two. The same thing can apply to light waves, but you cannot hear them. So what you can do, you can see them. No light, ma. You can see. So on the left side, this is when the sun is approaching this person. Okay. So okay la, Sun is approaching. So all the waves are squashed up. So this is what we call the wavelength are squashed up. And then the frequency is increased from the actual emission of the sun. The sun has some wavelength, okay? The light, la, wavelength of light. So this is what we call in astrophysics a blue shift. Why they call blue shift? I don't know. People convention, la, blue shift <laughs> looks bluer than it actually is, okay? Because of the wavelength of light. Okay, we'll go more into that later. Uh, but also, what if you are observer too? For observer 2, the sun is going further away. So the sun is going further or moving away. And the wavelength is more than the sun's actual wavelength of light. And also the frequency is much less. Because, you know, less frequency, bigger wavelength. This is what we call a red shift. Because the star may be will look redder than it actually is because the wavelength of light is stretched out. So long wavelength is red, small wavelength is blue. You know the colours of the rainbow? Red, orange. Oh, I cannot do it in English. I memorise it in Chinese. Well, red and then eventually get to blue and purple. So that's why I call blue and red shift. You might be wondering, why they... What, what, what is this for? Ah? Because all oh, people in astrophysics, very king, very powerful. They use this idea of Doppler effect to tell if a star or anything is moving away from them or coming towards them. Okay, so they will, they will, people will take telescope, they study star, and then they say, hmm, this star should be hydrogen, should be blue color, but it looks a bit more reddish, the wavelength of light. So, does that mean the universe is expanding because the star is moving further and further away? Whoa, very cool. They use Doppler shift to study the universe. Hmm. So don't worry, we'll see more about light electromagnetic spectrum in the last unit, uh, last subtopic of this chapter. But for now, just worry about this one. How do you use this equation in all kinds of scenarios, whether it's sound, whether it's light? How do you use this equation to uh, figure out the relationship between velocity, frequency, and to some extent, wavelength? Okay, let's go see some practice questions.